Hey folks, today I'm going to be doing an update video on my Frostclaw setup. If you saw my previous video, um, at the time I was cruising around 1000 Corruption. It was very, very easy. That still hasn't changed. 2000 Corruption now is still extremely easy for this character. Frostclaw is absolutely busted. Probably top three builds in the game right now. So the only reason I'm not currently higher than 2000 Corruption is just because it takes a very, very long time even if you can clear fast, you can kill Shade consistently, it still takes forever to actually push Corruption. So once I get more time, hopefully I'll, I'll get this up to three or 4,000, but this is where we're at for now. And as you saw in the clips, it's smooth as butter. So with that said, the main changes that we've made is we've put a little bit more focus on defense. You probably noticed my uh, damage taken is very low. I take very little damage and my ward values are generally very high in Echoes. Uh, that is because with this current setup, I put a lot of focus on defense, and I'm hoping that that will help scale me very high into corruption as I continue to push. So if that's something that interests you, this is probably the setup that you want to focus on. Uh, so we'll dig a little bit deeper into that as we go. Uh, but to start, the basis of Static Shell is you get up to a 2.75 uh, times more armor against shocked enemies, which everything are shocked. This is a huge, huge defensive buff, especially now that I am stacking a bit of armor. So right now you see I have 3,500. With a proper end game setup, you can probably get that to 4,000 or 4,500. Uh, one thing I am currently missing, which is extremely important, is Eternal Gauntlets with a T7 int or a experimental Affix, uh, I have these two, they're not super great, but something like this would be a massive defensive buff. Uh, the main reason why this is important is because in endgame, 
the number one killer is damage over time. It just scales uh, pretty, pretty hard. So that is what usually kills you. If you can get this combined with our extremely high armor value, you're going to feel very, very tanky. So right now I'm just rocking this Weaver's Glove. If I had this glove, I'd probably be closer to 4,500 armor with crazy DOT reduction. Uh, so yeah, with that said, that's probably what you want to focus on, especially if you're Merchant Guild, prioritize that. It's very strong. And even still, without that, thanks to the permanent freeze setup we can do with the Frozen Heart that I touched on in a previous video, I'll put that link in the description as well, um, even Shade is probably not going to kill us anyway, so there's nothing really stopping us from pushing three, four, maybe even 5,000 corruption. So yeah, let's quickly touch on some of the pieces of gear. Uh, I've actually put together a bit of a cheat sheet for you guys to uh, kind of have an idea of some of your different options. So here I've listed all of the affixes by priority. You'll see the trend here is that intelligence is generally number one, cast speed is very important, crit is important. You want to get as close to 100% crit chance as you can. Um, crit multi is valuable. Lightning pen is valuable. Uh, in the suffixes, you'll see they're generally not as valuable. I've highlighted the uh, very top tier ones and everything else is generally good. So there's a lot of armor in here. There's some shred stuff. Uh, Ignite on hit is actually somewhat valuable now. Uh, the reason behind that in Flame Rush, we've grabbed Flame Eater. So per Ignite stack, you convert into Ward. It's a pretty big defensive buff that we've added. So that's why I've added it to the Affix uh, priority list. Not super high priority, but if you get it, it's pretty great. Um, so yeah, just take a look at this if you're trying to figure out what to put on your gear. And here I've also listed all the priorities of items and a little bit of notes on when they could be valuable. So quickly touching on each one. Prismatic Gaze is basically mandatory for this setup because of the base crit. Without this, you probably won't get crit cap. Uh, there is a alternative if you're using the Never Late Crit Bug. So if you're unaware, this node here sometimes will bug out with certain setups and you'll get permanent crit. Uh, it seems like it happens when you're over five points in this. I don't really know exactly how it works, but I'm not gonna go over that anyway because I don't wanna recommend you guys a bugged build that might get fixed. So if that is something you wanna try, these two armor helmets are uh, good options, but otherwise Prismatic Gaze is your best in slot. Try and slam int on it if you can. Uh, static Shell. This is the current chest I'm using. It's very strong. There's some notes here on that, why it's good. Unstable Core is still a really good option. You can't really go wrong with this either way. If you have it, it's fine. Don't worry. Core of the Mountain is another possible good option. I don't really know if this is going to end up being one of the best ones, but you get an extra 10 int, uh, some periodic invulnerability, and some armor from the strength. This could be a hidden gem, but I don't actually know yet. It's very hard to get LP on. For gloves, as I mentioned, Eternal Gauntlets are your best in slot here with uh, intelligence, ideally T7, and if you can, you can uh, insight craft a armor as DOT mitigation on as well. After that is Weaver's Will. That's what I'm currently using. You can get some pretty good stats, and even just the base stats are, are strong, so any T7 int or anything else it's a pretty good glove. For uh, another possible maybe option is Malin's Hubris. It gives up to six int and bleed converted to ignite, which works with flame eater. This could be something that might be usable. I don't know, I haven't tested it. Maybe give it a try and, and let me know. It's a possible option. For boots, Blood of the Exhale is easy best in slot. Uh, gives a lot of move speed, 12 int and also 12 strength which now that we're stacking armor is percent armor. Really good stuff. Telfoons, it's a decent alternative. You can slam T7 int, it's also good. And if you don't have either of these as LP, just get any T7 int boot or just generally exalted int if you can. Citadel boots are pretty good because they give reduced crit damage taken. That helps us cap our crit reduction uh, until you get some better gear. So this is a good placeholder. 
Uh, for the belts, Strand of Souls, I still think, is one of the best options just because of how much ward it gives us. The difference is very, very noticeable. So try and get this with LP if you can. If not, it's still okay. And otherwise, you can run an armor belt, which uh, synergizes well with all our other armor stuff. For the relic, Twisted Heart is basically mandatory. You don't need LP, but if you do, great. Get Int or get plus levels or even cast speed. You have a lot of options here. For our catalyst, Enigma is basically mandatory. This is how we scale our damage with Spark Charge. Uh, without this, the build doesn't really work. For rings, Red Ring is best in slot. If you can get T7 in especially, but that's probably going to be unrealistic uh, unless you're a pretty crazy grinder. This probably won't happen, but even without LP, it's still a good item. Otherwise, a Intelligence Jewelry Stardial is good. If you don't get Int, it's probably not worth using. And some other options here, Opal Ring with uh, Exalted Int is very strong because it also gives extra attributes and cooldown reduction. So this is the best Exalted base. And another placeholder item could be a Ferrobors, gives up to 18 int, a bunch of armor, and necrotic res. It's a very strong item. For amulets, the Oracle amulet has the damage over time reduction. This is extremely strong. If you can get this, this will help you a lot in high corruption. If you're not currently high corruption, I'm talking like 1500 plus, then the base doesn't matter as much because DOT is probably not instantly killing you. So this is not mandatory until high corruption. Uh, but if you do get it, great. This is probably the best base. Uh, another thing you can use here is Omnis. Uh, one thing to note for this build is you need at least 23 levels in Frostclaw in order for the build to function. So you need one point here in Spark of Celerity in order to sustain your mana plus two of the idols. So if you aren't at 23 points, you can swap in an Omnis and that'll get you there as uh, like a placeholder. But otherwise you're going to have to move some other pieces of gear around to get those 23 points. And finally we have the Frozen Heart, the set piece. This is mandatory for the permanent stun lock setup for bossing. You just swap this in and you're basically good to go. You can stun lock Shade of Orbis and yeah, it pretty much makes you immortal because they can't actually hit you. Uh, here in the resources, I've linked that setup, so check that out. And for the main hand, the only thing we really use here is Mad Alchemist Ladle. It gives us all the int scaling, more damage, everything else. It's uh, basically an amazing item, easy to get LP, and yeah, just slam some cast speed on that, and you're basically good to go. Claw here is an honorable mention. It's for a different build, not directly this build, but if you want to try something different, you can look into some of the claw builds. It probably won't work uh, directly with my build. You'll have to find a different one, but we're checking out as well. And blessings here, I've listed all them. I won't dig too much into it, but armor is extremely important. Prioritize that. Otherwise, um, yeah, all res is also important for getting getting yourself capped because of how many uniques we run, it's pretty hard to get resistance. So definitely focus on that. And for idols, uh, one thing I've changed is I've put some prioritization on flat armor. This is a really good way to get a lot of armor. Uh, normally we don't get that much flat armor. Um, yeah, so try to get that. You can also fill out some of your resists here. You can get armor plus elemental resist. As a suffix, you can't get like fizz revs, void res, all that stuff. Those are on the the one by twos, but with these, you can. So for all of your other pieces of gear, it's generally better to not focus on elemental res just because it's easier to get them in idols. And for the one by two, these are not ideal. You don't want to be using these because they don't give you anything other than the resist. So if possible, try to avoid this. Uh, so if you can get these res in your other piece of gear, for the 1x3, there's a few good options here. You can get some lightning stuff, some crit chance, some damage. You can get mana spent gained as ward. You can get mana and armor if you're going for 300 mana bonus. Uh, so a few good things here. And this is where the, the good stuff is. The 1x4 gives you Frostclaw mana efficiency plus Ellie Pen. This is extremely important. Run the idle prophecies or try and buy these if you're Merchant Guild. Uh, definitely prioritize this. You need this for mana sustain. 
and for suffixes you have some mana spanking his word, lightning damage, mana and armor, all these are good stuff. So continuing on to the skills, I haven't actually changed much here. So the Nova tree is pretty much the same. The main thing to note is you need uh, minus nine mana here so that your Nova costs zero. This is important for mana sustain. You need the huge AOE here so it covers the whole screen. And you need spark charges here, which is the majority of our damage. This applies to all of the things our Nova hits. For Frostclaw, this is how we proc Nova. So you need this, this is extremely important. This here converts to lightning damage, which gives us plus one from Enigma, which gives plus two lightning skills. This is very important. We need at least one point here. You need roughly a, a total of about 35, 36% mana efficiency. So one point here plus two idols is enough. Or if you have two points here, you can run one idol or three point, you can run zero idols. So you regain those slots. But I do think the idols are pretty good, so it's not necessary. Um, Gift of Winter is the most important node here. This lets you mana sustain because you recover on cast and all these nodes down here count as additional casts. So if you're having mana problems, uh, I actually have a spreadsheet for that. If you want to see, you can plug in all your specs here and help yourself mana sustain. Um, as I said before, you need at least 23 levels in order for everything to work here for this build. And yeah, so just plug in all these numbers, go here, make a copy, and then all the columns, uh, the cells here in blue, you can modify based on your build. And this will help you figure out your mana sustain. So with that said, you need these three points here. It's important. You need this point here for mana sustain. You need the Gift of Winter, one point here, and then Volley of Glass for shotgunning. Once you have all of this stuff, your mana should be OK if everything's set up. And you should be doing a lot of damage, hopefully. The Snap Freeze here is a bit of a flex pick. You can swap this out for Flame Ward, but I'm running it right now for the permanent freeze, and I don't actually need to spec it out while running Echoes because I'm tanky enough as is, it's fine. Um, the important thing is you get a bunch of duration, you get a bunch of cooldown. I'm not gonna go over this too much because I touched on it on the, uh, the Stumlock video, so if you wanna see that, check that video out. For Runic, there's not really much to say here. Immutable order is very important. This takes your um, the order of your skills on your action bar and uses that to determine what runes you get. So quickly going into the game, a lot of people are a little bit confused on this, so I'll quickly touch on it. You can see here as I cast, it's always Frost, Fire, Frost. This is very important. Flame Rush is cold. Flame Ward is fire. Snap Freeze is cold. So whatever you do, make sure you have Cold Fire Cold so that you have Frost Guard. Frost Guard gives you a lot of ward, some spell damage, some cast speed, all sorts of good stuff. So make sure you have that set up correctly. Um, yeah, so that's how Immutable Order works. We get a bit of spell damage here. We get some cooldown here. Uh, we get additional cast here, so it casts twice. And when you spend over 10 mana, it gives you the runic energy stacks very quickly. So here you can see our runic energy goes up as we cast. And then by the time we cast our invocation again, we have all our stacks. So that's how that works. Uh, Flame Rush is pretty much the same as before. You get Frenzy here, which is a bunch of cast speed. This is really important. You get a bit, bit of DR here, especially the damage over time DR. And uh, this is really important to help you get out of sticky situations or just general mobility. Uh, here we have mana efficiency cooldown. This is good stuff. And here you have the cold conversion, which is needed for the frost fire frost. A uh, bit of speed and range here. And the change I've made is I added fire eater. So typically with this build, we do a lot of hits per second. If you can get around, just as an example, say 100 stacks of ignite, in the two and a bit second cooldown of this ability, every time you dash through the enemy, say it's a boss, you'll get 1200 ward if you have 100 stacks of ignite, which is really, really significant. Now I'm quickly going to touch on passives. Uh, the Sork tree is pretty much unchanged. Uh, you need this points here in order to unlock the other trees, so just quickly touching on it. 
two points here just because we need them. Here we have int. Int is extremely important because it's an int stacking build. Here we get a bit of cast speed. Cast speed is also extremely important. And here we have a bit of crit stuff. In the sort tree, this is pretty much unchanged versus before. We have int here and spell crit per int, very important. Here we have a bunch of cast speed and also move speed. These are very important. Um, here we have a travel node and then damage leech. Uh, so a lot of people are confused on how the Twisted Heart works. Twisted Heart converts your current health into ward. So for that to function, you need some sort of life gain. We do it through leech. This is how we do it, this node here, and it also gives us lightning pen, which is great for damage. In the room master tree, uh, it's pretty much the same as before. I've made a few small changes. Um, here we still get the cast speed. We still get the int. We still get the uh, crit damage reduction. It's very important, and also int. This is ward per rune, so we have three runes. It's a lot of ward per cast. And here we have the crit multi. It's a lot of crit multi. And I've specced into this. I'm testing it out, not sure if it's great, but if you have a raw rune, so the fire one, you get doubled effect. This is 2% more damage per point. So it seems somewhat cost effective, but this is not mandatory. You could probably unspec this, grab some DR or crit chance if you're not crit capped. You'll see that I am crit capped. Uh, but if you're not, you can grab this. It also gives you a bit of more damage when you get five points, so it's not bad. Um, if you want to do the never late bug, you can put some points into this and you'll hopefully be crit capped. I don't want to recommend it because they might bug fix it. Um, and it doesn't seem to always work, but you can do that. There's also some cast speed here. I don't find that it's uh, efficient node wise. So if I grab one point here and then three points here, that would be 2.5% cast speed per node, uh, which I don't think is worth taking. But if you want, you can. And here we have cooldown recovery per int and 10 int. This is really strong. You can just put eight points in this. The extra two is not necessary if you want. You can move that into here for DR or here for crit chance, wherever you want. You don't need 10 here. And then finally for hurricane, this gives us some flat damage on lightning. We're always using lightning, so we always have this damage. This is pretty nice. Here we get the brand application which is so that this applies. This is ward gain versus branded boss. It's a very, very huge boost to our ward and also spell damage. So you need this for this to be active. And here, the Jagged Veil, we get ward gain on crit, and we also have a multiplier to our crit multi. So this is also really good. Another thing that you can do if you want is you can run Rune Word Inferno. This will give you another 30% more multiplier on armor. It's a little bit hard to run because we don't normally have uh, spammable fire skills. But one thing that you can do if you want is you can put a few points into this and then with your flame rush, you can unspec it as cold. So turn it back into fire. You can then swap your flame ward to be fire. Uh, cold rather. So you can grab this point here, which unlocks these armor nodes. So with this, you would have a cold flame ward and a fire flame rush. So then you'd swap these abilities around. So you'd still have the cold fire cold with that setup. And that unlocks an extra 30% more armor, which seems to be pretty strong. So that is an option for you if you want a bit more defense. Anyway, it's uh, it's been a pretty long video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. Feel free to uh, let me know with any other questions you might have. I'm happy to answer. And yeah, I'll uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.